Okay, welcome to the 3DO for 3.3b. We're going to do slightly more complicated um, truth tables for negation, conjunction, and disjunction. This time we're going to use three simple <coughs> statements. Okay, uh, to make it just a little bit deeper, um, we are going to construct the truth tables now for three statements. And we're going to determine the truth value of a compound statement for a specific case. So when we know the truth or falsity of a statement, we're going to determine the validity of a specific case. All right. <clears throat> so what does it look like <clears throat> when we're combining a truth table with three statements? So <clears throat> there are eight different true-false combinations for compound statements consisting of three simple statements. You'll notice that P is going to start off with our familiar true, true, but it's also going to go to true, true, okay, so there's four trues there, and then false, 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 false. For Q, this is going to look like our old P, where we have true, true, false, false, and then we're going to replicate that pattern, true, true, false, false. And then for R, is going to look like our old Q, so true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false. Okay, so this means that we're going to have all three trues, we're going to have two trues, two trues, two trues, okay, and then we're going to have one true, one true, one true, and then all false. So we're going to have all of the possibilities with this um, table right here. Okay, right? so here's our example. Let's construct a truth table for this. I study hard and ace the final or I fail the course and of course the very important um, dominance of connective the comma right there is uh, going to be part of our solution okay and then so I want to start with this so P is going to be I study hard Q is going to be I ace the final and R is going to be, I fail the course. Okay? So, that's what we're looking at for the statements here. Okay? Now, we want to write the given statement in symbolic form. So, as I look, let's go ahead and put this right here. Right? Um... I, I study hard is going to be P and ace the final Q comma means these are going to be in parentheses or the connective I fail the course R. So they're going to have I study hard and I ace the final or I fail the course. And so now what we want to do is actually determine draw a truth table for this, alright? So I'm going to have P, Q, and R that I'm going to need to fill in my truth table for. And I know that I'm going to have eight rows. I'm going to turn this sideways just a little bit. Alright, so here we go. Here's one, two, three, four, Let's do five, six, and then we're going to do seven and eight down here below the frame, okay? <clears throat> so, using the pattern of four trues and falses, two trues and falses, and then one true, one false, I'm going to fill in the table here. So I'm going to have four trues, one, two, three three, four, and four falses, okay, and then two trues and two falses, two trues, two falses, two trues, I went too far, and two falses, and then R is going to be true, false, true, false, true, false, true, false, and then we're just following that, that pattern right there. Now, I don't have any negations in here, so I just need the and, P, 
P and Q to put that connective together and P and Q is true, true, false, 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 false. And if you look, I have two trues out of eight. When before I used to have one true out of four. So this is the same ratio, so this is basically what I would expect. So that makes me happy. Now we have the or R, right? So this column is gonna bump up against this column. So now I'm gonna have P and Q or R. So I'm gonna compare these two columns together. So true and true is true. <coughs> true and false is true. True and false is true. False and false is false. True and false is true. False and false is false. True and false is false. And the false and false is false. Oh, wait. I made a mistake. The true and false is true right here. I'm sorry. Okay. So, um, we end up with one, two, three falses. Three false conditions. And the rest of them are true conditions. Okay, so what was B? B asked us, suppose that you study hard. Well, you study hard is P being true. So I'm going to look at all the P's being true. Okay, so all the P's are true. And then we're going to say, you do not ace the final. So you do not ace the final is false. So Q is going to be false. And I'm only looking at these four rows right here. I'm not looking at these down here because already the P is not true. So I'm here with this one. And then, of course, last but not least, you do not ace. Oh, you fail the course, right? So you fail the course is I fail the course. So R is true. So where is R true in these two? Well, it's only right here. Okay, and so this row right here says that the statement, the compound statement, is going to be true. So under these conditions, is the compound statement true or false? Under these conditions, the statement is true. If I study hard, but I don't ace the final, then I fail the course. Well, yeah, if you study hard, but you don't ace the final, you probably will fail the course, and so that is going to be a true statement right there. And so the statement is true. Okay? So we can determine the truth value of a compound statement for a specific case in which the truth values of the simple statements are known, but we can do that without constructing an entire truth table. Well, that, that was a lot of work for that last one. So if we know the truth or falsity of a particular statement, we can look at a specific case and we don't have to construct the entire truth table. So this saves us some work and saving us some work makes us happy. So what we want to do is substitute the truth values of the simple statements into the symbolic form of the compound statement and use the appropriate definitions to determine the truth or value of the compound statement. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at our last example, example number seven. Now, of course, this is in the Blitzer book and in the... Um, PowerPoint slide that's available to you, but basically the freshmen are going to end up being 24% of the population, unclassified is 2, seniors are, looks like 33%, wow, pause for station identification, 33%, Okay, and over here we're going to have, oh, and the two, right? So, 35, 24, 21, and 20. Okay, so those are the values that are there, and you can verify that. All right, so what are we going to do is we're going to use the information in the circle graphs to determine the truth value of the following statement. It is not true that freshmen make up 24% of the undergraduate college population. 
and account for more than one-third of the undergraduate deaths, or seniors do not account for 30% of the undergraduate deaths. Okay? Wow. Well, that's a really complex statement, right? So let's try and, and break it down um, and, and figure out. So we need, we need some statements here. Let's make a statement P, okay? And statement P we're going to get from it is not true that freshmen make up 24% of the undergraduate college population. So P is it is true that freshmen make up 24% of the undergraduate graduate uh, college population. And what we'll do is we'll negate it when we do the transformation because I don't like having this not in here. So I'm going to put it is true that college freshmen make up 24% of the undergraduate count and account for more than one-third of the deaths. So here's Q. Q is going to be freshmen account for more than uh, one-third of undergraduate deaths. And then there's your connective, and or, seniors do not account for 30% of the undergraduate deaths. So QR is going to be seniors account for, I'm going to take out this do not, this negation, and just put it into my translation. Seniors account for 30% of undergrad you it deaths all right so there's my translation of p q and r removing the negations because i think that's really important to have clean statements without any negations all right so what do we do with this well what we're going to do with this is we're going to substitute in Oh, we're gonna, oh, we have to write the statement. So I'm not going to substitute in yet. What I want to do is write the statement. So it is not true. So that's going to be not P. Okay. And account for more than one third of the deaths, freshman and Q. And then in parentheses because of the comma. Right? Because of the comma right there. Or, and then the R is seniors do not, so not R. So you have not P and Q or not R. And so now what I want to do is I want to substitute in the truth values for P, Q, and R that we obtained from the circle graphs. Okay? So remember, P is, it is true that freshmen make up 24% of the undergraduate college population. So that is true. Freshmen do make up 24% of the college population. So P is true, so not P is false. Q is freshmen account for more than one-third of undergraduate deaths. Well, do freshmen account for more than one-third of undergraduate deaths? Well, they account for 35% of undergraduate deaths. So Q is true, so we're going to substitute in a true here, right? Or R is seniors account for 30% of undergraduate deaths. Seniors do not account for more than 30% of undergraduate deaths. They only account for 20% of undergraduate deaths. So that's false. And so not R is going to be true. Okay, and here's our connective. Well, false and true is false. But false or true is true. So this is the truth statement that we have arrived at. It's true. We got it by substituting the truth values for P, Q, and R into this particular formula. 
we got these truth values from our circle graphs and we were able to without constructing a table use the definitions to simplify it down to t and that makes us really happy because we're lazy mathematicians and we don't like doing all that work okay alright that concludes uh, 3.3 .3. go on to 3.4